Hey, 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 check one, two. How's it going, everyone? Facebook and YouTube, good to see you guys. Sorry for a little bit of a late start today, but don't worry, I'll make sure you get your half hour. Um, so, how are we all doing? Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you're uh, tuning in from today. Um, again, thank you for joining. I am Nick Bell, your product specialist for the day. Um, today, we're gonna be taking a look at Catalyst. Um, so, pretty much my uh, my agenda for today is to talk about the customized uh, customized boost settings per amp model. Now, um, there's not a whole lot of information of these uh, of what they do, um, you know, in the manual and online and such. So I thought it'd be you know fun to kind of lift the veil and show exactly what each of these boosts do. Um, you know, so it's not just you know your typical boost like literally for every amp model there's something different happening and um, I think it's really cool and uh, you know it just gets you a bit more out of these amps so Paul what's up thanks for joining us today on YouTube so pretty much uh, going direct for you guys today here's my overhead this is my catalyst right here so even though I'm talking about boosts today if you have any catalyst questions you know, please feel free to, you know, ask whatever it may be, you know, us talking about the boost is a, is like a placeholder, you know, but we're just talking shop today. Um, I'm sure we have some product specialists in the chat, whether it's Tony Campanovo, Chris Poyer, um, you know, they could chime in when need be. Otherwise, I'll do my best to field your questions as they come in. But um, starting off, I'm going to switch my screens here. Clarity. So the first amp voicing. Uh, being clean, the actual amp uh, is Clarity. So if you're unfamiliar with Catalyst, you know, maybe you've heard about it or you haven't really, you know, dived into it, um, Catalyst features six original amp designs. So when you think about all the data we've collected with modeling amps, you know, in our lifetime, we have all this awesome data, right? And plus our sound design team is a group of, you know, is a group of three that build their own amps, they copy, uh, they've made their own copies of popular amps and effects, and so we essentially have had a sound design team just create these amps from the ground up. So think about six voicings, familiar voicings that we're all familiar with, but you know these aren't amps you could go out in the store and buy. So today what I have going on is just due to my setup with you know, trying to mic this amp up and such, and with my room mic and all, um, you know, I don't have a soundproof room, you know, we're streaming from home here. So what I'm doing is I'm going direct. Um, taking a look here at, uh, at Catalyst Edit, we'll see that my direct out settings, I'm using a 112 cab with a 57 dynamic. So it, this is going to remain, th th these direct out settings are gonna remain the same for every amp model I use just so you can you know, get a uh, you know, crystal clear idea of how these amps sound, going direct at least. Um, but if, you know, if I can mic this amp up, I would love to. You know, it's a traditional style amp, so you, know, you have the option to go direct out via USB or the XLR output, um, but it's a traditional amp. And so if I was in a live setting, I love micing amps, so I would totally mic this amp up. But for today, we are going direct. Um, Brian, chime in. <laughs> Thank you. So, clarity here. Um, starting off, let's see if, if anything sounds off, let me know. But clarity is a very, very clean, cr pristine clean um, type of a sound, or voicing for that matter. Um, it, it almost reminds me of, you know, kind of like a solid state clean. <laughs> And so let me know how that's coming across. I could move some uh, levels around if need be, but this is clarity as it sits. You know, crystal clean, right? Tony Campanovo in the house. What's up, brother? Thank you for joining. So taking a look here, this is clarity, nice and clean, right? But if I go and I crank on the boost, and I could do that either by going into the editor here and clicking on, or we obviously can do this on the top panel of the amp, 
or connect the two button foot switch or a MIDI controller and you can do that as well. So what's happening when we turn on the boost? Well, for clarity, what's happening is it's adding a tube stage to the power section with some gentle clipping before the amp model. So if you think about it, you know, it, how it sounds and feels to me, I'm going from a solid state kind of a clean to more of a, an American clean. Um, so if you think of going from a solid state clean amp to, you know, maybe another clean amp that is, you know, tube driven, you know, like what we see with Fender and such, you get a different kind of a sound. So with the boost off, again, this is what we have. Very clean. Now, if we turn that boost on, so if I go to the neck pickup, go into single coil. kind of turn up the low end a bit here and just kind of mess around with some tone you know we could turn up the the bass a bit so not a bad sound right but you can hear that difference so if, again turning the boost off Turning the boost on. So as you can tell, it you know you're kind of modding the amp, if you will. So when you think about it, turning on this boost, I'm not just adding some 10 dB of a boost or just you know some random gain or distortion. You're actually altering the circuitry of the amp here. Um, just by adding in that boost. So really cool, another way to kind of, you know, get a little more bang for your buck out of this one amp model. So that's what we get with Clarity. Let's move on to Boutique. So the amp model for Boutique is called Aristocrat. And so this amp model was, you know, inspired by boutique-y, hand-wired amps, you know, amps that are, you know, you know, hard to come by, let's say, or when you do come by them, you know, and maybe a, you know, vintage guitar shop, they're extremely expensive, right? So this guitar amp has a really great sound. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to my boutique setting. I'm taking a look here. That's where we're at. So very good. And let's hear the kind of tone we get from old aristocrat here. <laughs> Not a bad sound at all, going to single coil in the neck. All right, so what happens when we add the boost to this guy? So the boost adds a boutique boost pedal before the amp. So this is actually, um, the Kinky Boost, which is a, you know, Helix model here. And so the Kinky Boost, which is based off of, uh, what is it, the Exotic EP. It's a compressor, but it adds some nice boost. So taking a look here, we have the boost off. Let's turn that boost on. Right off the bat, you could tell it makes it a lot thicker. at 36 percent here i could crank this up a bit more if you need a little more sizzle a little extra push off that clip and you can really hear that compression tony campanovo single coils have become my preferred pickup choice i know right they have they just have so much characteristic and that's you know I'm in my neck position there
So, taking a look here, again, the boost, what we're getting from that is we're getting this, you know, really awesome boutique-y kind of a compression pedal placed before the amp model. So, a, a, a bit of a different um, characteristic here compared to what we get with the Clarity amp model, where we were changing some of its circuitry and adding a tube. Here, we're literally just adding a pedal before the amp model. Cool stuff there, right? So we're just plugging along here. Let's move on over to chime. And so when you hear the term chime, if you thought of a class A amplifier, well, guess what? That's what it is. So what we have here is a chime voicing um, with the uh, original amp design named Kirillon, or Kirillon, uh, however. Um, and so what's going on here is it's your classic chime. It's just a bigger yet deeper type of a sound where you can really dial this in. Now, if you think about it, if I'm go if I want to go over to chime here, well, Catalyst is a two-channel amplifier. Now, th what's really cool about Catalyst is you actually have six banks installed. So, in the editor, I could just click the bank number and choose a different bank number, but if you're asking, well, what if I want to change banks on the face of the amp? Well, let me show you that. So to change banks on the front panel of Catalyst, all you do is you press and hold the manual button. And then you'll notice that one out of six positions on the selector switch is going to be your one of six banks. So currently I'm in clean, which is bank one. But if I just go over one, now I'm in bank two. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at the editor and we'll see that, well, if I jump to channel B, but channel A, there's my chime. And then channel B will be my crunch. Then bank three, A will be dynamic and B will be high gain. So let's go over to chime here. We notice that the uh, boost is off. And let's just hear what we have with the old chime voicing here. A little Brian May for you in the morning. <laughs> you know, a nice spanky sound. Now, when we turn on the boost, what that's going to do for us is it's going to add a vintage style germanium tra transistor treble booster before the amp. The HX model being the Derange Master, um, but this is a model of a uh, of a Dallas uh, Range Master or yeah Range Master treble booster, and so really popular um, overdrive pedal, um, you know, used by the likes of you know guys like Brian May and many many others, and this really gets your tone cooking. So I'm just going to go right over to Catalyst Edit. So with it off, this is our tone. <laughs> With it on, and I'm only at 13%, so if I wanted to crank this up even more, it, it does not take much to get this thing cooking. And so it, it does its job, treble booster, right? And so I'm just really cooking in the high end. And so that's your chime there. Excuse the terrible playing. But other than that, gives you a good idea on what you get here. So again, another amp model where we're putting a distortion or a just a drive of some sort in front of the amp. Um, let's see what we got here from Paul. A Carillion you can, is a pitched percussion instrument that is played with a keyboard and consists of at least 32 bells. Well, look at that. The more you know. Yeah, very interesting name, huh? Very cool. Thank you, Paul. Much appreciated. So we're plugging along here. We're halfway through the amp models. So we saw with the clean, we changed some amp circuitry. And with Boutique and Chime, um, you know, we're just adding a overdrive or a boost pedal of some sort 
whether it was the compressor or this deranged master in front of the amp model. But let's move on over to voltage. This is under the crunch amp voicing. So the amp model, the original amp design for crunch would be voltage. And so taking a look at my catalyst edit here, channel B, that's my crunch. And let's see what we got. Uh, humbucker in the bridge. Really dig this amp model. I think crunch and dynamic are my two favorites um, in catalyst. But Crunch just has some really good low end. Not bad. So that's our uh, Crunch there. Um, amp model voltage. So what does the boost do for us with this amp model? Well, this adds an extra preamp to gain stage. So um, we're seeing kind of like what we saw with clean where we're not adding an actual overdrive or boost pedal before the amp. We're changing the circuitry of the amp model here by adding a preamp tube or essentially a preamp stage right to the preamp. So taking a look over at Catalyst Edit, I could turn on the boost. Again, you know, for those of us maybe just joining us, I could turn on the boost directly from the amp with that LED there or with the additional um, with an additional foot switch. Maybe it's the maybe it's the LFS2. Sorry if my guitar is going there and cut me off. But um, yeah, you could turn on the boost from the amp or from an external foot switch. So again, amp just straight up. <laughs> Let's add that boost, which is adding a preamp stage to the uh, amp model. Very dry sound so far. Let's see, you know. And what's great about Catus is we could always add some reverb, right? So, as you can see, adding that boost definitely thickens up the tone. And you can tell that it's, you know, something's going on with the amp. It's not an overdrive pedal in front of the amp. As you know, whenever you drive boot, whenever you add boost, distortion overdrives before your amp model, you lose some of that low end. And, um, which can be really good for tightening up your sound. But, you know, if you, you know, want to save that low end and you really dig that, you know, if being able to add a preamp stage to your amp is never a bad thing, right? <laughs> With it off, with it on. It's just ah, such a good sound. Very cool stuff. So it looks like we're plugging along here. Let's move on to our next amp model being uh, the dynamic, um, which the amp model for dynamic is kinetic. And uh, this literally, you could, have, you could have not have given this amp a better voicing name of dynamic because you can get really clean with this thing and, and really cooking all at the same time. Taking a look at my settings for this amplifier, we'll go into bank three. Channel A is the dynamic. So taking a look at my settings here, the gains at 80, and you know, and the EQ stack looks, uh, you know, is is a pretty common kind of setting here. Let's hear the tone that we have. Probably turn up the volume just a hair. Maybe that's too much. We'll go down to 54. Perfect. So if we look at the gain here, if I turn the gain down to let's say 20%, it's clean. You know, I'll, I'll compensate with the volume here. Yeah. 
you know, that is a very, very clean sound. Where, whereas I can literally just go back up to 80 here. You know, and now it's cooking, right? So again, the amp model for dynamic is the dynamic voicing and it is, again, very dynamic. <laughs> Now, when we add on the boost, what is that doing for us? Well, the boost adds gain and EQ modifications to simulate classic amp mods. So this is literally just going into the amp circuitry and moving some stuff around, boosting some, taking some stuff away. And so when you think of really popular amp models, um, you know, even like the Dookie mods, stuff like that, um, you know, with Marshalls and those kind of amplifiers, our sound design team just took really, you know, the best of all the worlds of common amp and popular amp mods and uh, put those forth with the kinetic amp model. So taking a look here, again, amp without the boost. Turn on that boost and what do we got? You know, this amp model is very good for leads. It's also very good for rhythm, um, depending on what you're going after. But... You can, you know, just really, really start pushing this wherever you want it to go. Turn up that reverb even some more. Not bad. You know, you could just really push this wherever you want to go. And the boost is only at 50%. So we're hearing that gain in those amp mods at 50%. If I want to crank it up even more, go up to 75. So bumping it up a bit right there. Going to uh, next So very dynamic sound, as you can tell. We started off extremely, clean, you know, really clean with this amp model, and then got nice and dirty. Um, let's see what we have here. Picks a lot. Great question. I have an HX Stomp. Would adding a preamp block in front of a compression block get a sustain closer to simulating running a 1176 into a second 1176 compressor. Hmm. It's uh, hard to say. Um, I'm not too sure. You know, it's just due to not running that personally. I'm not too sure what you would get from that. Um, especially a preamp block in front of a compression block. You know, depending on what you're going in after that. Um, perhaps Tony or Chris, who's in the chat, could chime in on that. Because um, I haven't had much experience doing that. I rare, The only time I really ever use a preamp block is if I'm running, you know, four cable method into an amp and I need, you know, some additional sounds. But unfortunately, I don't have much to offer you there. Um, maybe... Uh, Chris or Tony could chime in on that. Sorry that I don't have an answer on that one, but I don't want to give you any answers that may lead you in the wrong direction just due to that's not, you know, I, I just am unsure. But great question. We love it when you guys um, hit us with your questions. Always keeps us on our toes. So maybe you guys could chime in on that one. I'll leave that to y'all. And I am going to continue here. 
So we're getting it up to that half hour, which is great because we are now on our final amp model. So for our high gain voicing, the original amp design is called Oblivion. So what Oblivion does for us here is give us a really, really great modern high gain tone. Um, but you, you have the ability to, you know, like what we say, contemporary high gain with extended lows. So if you really love that boomy, even that genty kind of high gain tone, you can definitely get that out of Catalyst. Now, obviously, again, we are going direct here. So there are some characteristics, even that low end I was speaking about that you may not hear, you know, on your phone, tablet, or computer, whatever you're viewing this on. But hearing the high gain setting in person, it just, it, it's, it's just, killer it's awesome so let's see what we have without the boost set very very heavy and very tight as well <laughs> Who can name that? Sorry. So that's what we get. get. Get your ears kind of adjusted to what we get with the Oblivion amp model. So what happens when we enable the boost? Well, the boost adds a model of a classic overdrive pedal before the amp model. And if you guessed a Stupor OD or what it's modeled after being a uh, the Boss SD1, that's the you know that's the what the Stupor OD is uh, modeled after. So that's what we're putting before the amp. So like I was saying earlier, sometimes when you add you know or most of the time when you add an overdrive or a distortion before the amp model, it tightens up that low end. And so that's why when we look here at my edit, the boost is saved at four percent. And so sometimes the idea with you know because you may be thinking, well, man, this is a high gain amp model. Why are you adding an overdrive pedal to a high gain amp model? And by doing so, you're able to kind of clean up or tighten up the low end and the overall tone of the amp by adding just, just the voicing, the filtering and voicing of these overdrive pedals. And you'll see it across many popular guitar tones where they're just adding a little bit of, of an overdrive before their high gain amplifier just to kind of tighten everything up. So let's see what we get here again um, without the boost. You know, really listen to that low end. Now when we turn on the boost, adding that overdrive before the amp. Same thing, but with it off. Now with it on. So we could even crank that up a bit more, but honestly, like for my personal taste, I don't, I don't see why I would have to go over five. But if you're, if you're one who just wants more gain than is necessary, you can do so, and this is what you get. <laughs> So now we're swimming in gain. You could uh, you could even hear that gate kind of kicking in a bit. If we turn that gain that gate off, you can hear how we're starting to get into the chip pan territory. But I think you know running this at about you know up to four or five percent gives gives you a nice tighter low end. So 
that's really all I had for you guys. Again, there's not a whole lot out there. I'm not sure why, but there's not a whole lot out here on what these boost settings do. Um, I think it's some really good information as well, but now you guys know what these customized boost settings do per amp model. Let me take a quick look at the chat before I let you guys go. It looks like Tony, um, Tony and uh, Chris have uh, t been fielding the questions, doing a great job. Is there a line six compression block that comes closer? Technically, you could put a pre and real panel. Thanks, Tony. Lines are kind of similar. All right. So it looks like everything has been handled here really well. So other than that, guys, that's all I had for you. I hope it was informative. Hope you enjoyed learning um, what these customized boost settings do per amp model. As you know, we're not just adding a random boost, you know, before the amp. We're actually, you know, doing some really cool stuff here. Whether it's, you know, whether it's altering, you know, altering an amp circuitry like what we've done here with kinetic or even voltage um you know but it, it, it's some really cool stuff we're either changing the amp circuitry or adding something popular before the amp model now before i let you go just so you know we do have these things called uh, virtual lessons it's written up here skype lessons but we'll use whatever you know it might be zoom teams whatever works out best for you but these are free um, for the time being. Who knows if that'll ever change. But if you want to get kind of what we had today, this one-on-one -on -one session with a Line 6 product specialist, whether it's me, Ross, Tony, Chris, go to line6.com forward slash events and sign up. And uh, you can get one of us. You may maybe even be able to request one of us if that's your thing. Otherwise, all of us, all the other guys could, um, you know, could really answer and do whatever you need it and whatever you want to get out of these. So check out line6.com forward slash events for a uh, Helix virtual lesson. And in the words of my colleague and friend and brother, Tony Campanovo, stick a fork in me, I am done. Um, we'll see you guys next time. And other than that, be safe, be well, and have a great weekend. Thank you, guys.